Let's first talk about one of the most basic joints, one that probably everyone uh, starts with. It's a screw joint. And this is simply a way that you can join two pieces um, at pretty much a right angle if you screw through the thickness of one into another piece, whether you're joining them face to face or the top of a cabinet down into the cabinet side or if you're going through a side of a cabinet into a shelf or a divider of some sort. You can use a screw joint. Let's take a look at what, uh, what makes up a screw joint. I've got one here that I've cut away and of course you've got the screw here. Here's the upright piece and the mating piece. With a screw joint typically you will uh, drill uh, a, what's called a pilot hole. That is a, a small hole that the screw uh, feeds into. It's just slightly smaller than the diameter of the screw so the, the threads bite in. Uh, in the old days, let's say, you'd also drill a shank hole in this piece here. Uh, the shank hole allowed the screw to pass through without the threads biting in. That way, when the threads bite into the lower piece, it really draws those two pieces tightly together. Nowadays, at least in the wood shop, we are using what are called production screws. You need only drill a pilot hole through both pieces, and then the uh, tip of the screw has a uh, little self-tap and it pulls the pieces together or bores through and as the screw gets there it pulls those pieces together nice and tightly. On this piece you can also see that the head of the screw has this taper on it and the head is sitting just a little bit under the surface of the, uh, of the top piece here. That uh, area, a little depression where the head of the screw sits is called a countersink. And you can drill that in one of two ways. I mean, you, there are bore, uh, bits that bore the countersink, or you can buy a bit such as this. This has a tapered drill bit, and then at the very tip, you can see these little tapered teeth. Those will bore the uh, countersink, and this collar around the top here stops the bit, prevents it from going any deeper than it has to, so that. Uh, uh, your countersink is only as deep as it needs to be to set the screw head flush with the mating piece. Now, as you look at a piece, of course, if you've got screw joints all along here, you may not like the appearance of that screw head. So there are several ways you can hide that. You can drill what's called a counter bore, essentially a countersink that's deep enough to allow the head of the screw to recess below the surface. Then you can plug that counter bore in a variety of ways. Now here on this board I'm showing you this is a, how it would look from the surface. We've got a screw set into a countersink. Then there here are three types of ways you can hide the head of a screw. Uh, these two here are end grain plugs. Those are simply cut from a dowel. I've got an oak dowel to match my oak wood here. And then in the counter bore just stick in the dowel cut off a short length of it, glue it in, and then cut and sand it flush after the glue dries. And I've got two of them here. This one, you can see neither one really makes much difference in how one is oriented at 90 degrees to the other. But it really makes not much difference in how they're oriented because it's end grain, so it's always going to look a little bit different than the face grain on which the, uh, uh, they're, they're applied. Another method you can hide counter bores with is to use what are called button plugs. Now these are kind of mushroom shaped caps. They uh, come pre-packaged. You can buy them in packs of 25 and 100 and probably even larger than that. But these little plugs simply glue into the counter bore and you can see by uh, their design they're meant to sit high so they can be used as a decorative element on your piece. You can also see that to a degree you can sort of blend them in. This one, the grain runs the same direction as the face piece. This one I chose because it's got a little dark grain in it and it's just kind of ugly looking compared to the face grain and it's sitting at an angle to the face grain so this one pops out quite a bit more than this one. Probably the easiest way and the best way to really blend in a plug is to cut your own out of stock um, similar to what you're building your project out of. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute but you can see here, here are two plugs that have been cut from face grain with a plug cutter. This one, again, the grain is oriented at 90 degrees to the face grain, so you can see it, your eye is kind of drawn to it. It kind of pops out. This top one, I've oriented to run again. The grain is parallel with the face grain of the project part, 
so it blends in pretty well. So if you're going to use screw joints, you have to sometimes have to find a way to hide them, and these are your, really your three options. Let's talk about how we can make the, uh, the holes, the counter bores, and the plugs to, uh, to first make a screw joint and then also to hide your plugs. Let's say we're making a shallow box and this is going to be one side, it'll be screwed through into the mating side here. The piece that I'm going to drive the screws through, I'm just clamp to my bench here, I've got a scrap backer board here. What that'll do is prevent the uh, back side of that board from splitting out as the drill bit comes through. I've also got it extended over the edge of my bench back here so that I don't <laughs> drill into my workbench. I'm going to do this with just a couple of drill bits. I'm going to take, this is a 3 8 inch bit, I'm going to drill the counter bore first. But I need to know where to drill. My piece is 3 quarters of an inch thick, so I want to center my screws on that thickness. That's 3 8 of an inch. Square is set at 3 8 and just drag it along here. Make a mark. Now if I want to be real precise, I could also measure in from each edge so that they're uh, the same distance in, give it a nice uniform look. So there's one spot, there's the spot for my second screw. Now I want to drill down just deep enough that the screw head will disappear below the surface. Don't overdo it. Now the nice thing about using a brad point bit like I had there is after you drill the counter bore, you end up with a nice little dimple down in the center of that counter bore. That gives you the perfect place to register the drill bit for drilling the pilot hole. Now to drill a pilot hole, I'm actually going to have to drill a pilot hole into the mating piece. Drilling, uh, screwing into end grain like this without a pilot hole is just asking to split your work piece. What I like to do is I put it on the end vise here, match the pieces up, clamp one in place, line up the edges, and then I'm going to change out my drill bit to my pilot hole size. Now again I've got a perfect spot to place my drill bit, make sure things are straight up and down. Then drill in. Drill my second. Now with a screw joint, you can add glue if you want. One thing is that your one mating surface here is end grain, so end grain doesn't provide a real strong glue surface, but it does provide a little bit of extra uh, adhesion if you want, so if you want to add glue, you certainly may. Then simply drive the screws in. And there's our screw joint. Then I can cut plugs to cover those, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Now, instead of messing around with two drill bits, Earlier I showed you this single bit, where you've got a bit and a uh, countersink in here. By moving this collar up, you can also bore deeper to create a counter bore. So in one step, you can drill the pilot hole, the countersink, and the counter bore. Okay, now that's mounted, it's, uh, it's set for a nice countersink. What I want to do is pull this collar back so I can drill a counter bore. There's an Allen key on each side here that uh, secures it to that portion of the bit, loosen those up, I'm going to slide those back. And I don't want this uh, counter bore to be more than half the depth of my workpiece. I'm just going to quick check here. Not going to be super precise, but I want to make sure I'm not going too deep. That's about right. Tighten up the Allen key on each side. And now, with just one bit, I'm ready to drill 
the pilot hole, the countersink, and the counter bore. So there's my pieces, nice counter bores, screw things together. So there we go, a good screw joint. I've got uh, my counter bores there and when it comes time to plug them, I can again use these little mushroom buttons that'll fit in there. Or if I want to cut a piece of dowel plug to go in there, it's as simple as putting it in there then just taking a pencil and making a mark on there to indicate how long a piece you need. Then you can cut that off and glue it in. You don't have to be real precise here. You want to make it a little long because after the glue dries, you're going to cut it flush and sand it off. So that's all there is for my end grain plug. Dab of glue. And I like to put the glue into the counter bore. You get less chance of getting squeeze out on the surface that way. Just a little dab there. Press that in place, and you can see it extends above the surface a little bit, exactly what I want, so I can come back with a sanding block, some sandpaper, sand it flush, help it blend in. Now the third way that I showed you earlier to cover the counter bore is by making a face grain plug, and that's done at the drill press with a special bit called a plug cutter. So let's go to the drill press, I'll show you how to do that. So this is a 3 8 inch plug cutter. Uh, we're using 3 8 because we drilled 3 8 inch counter bore. Uh, these do come in other sizes. You can get quarter inch and half inch or you know, whatever your needs are. And you can use them in a handheld drill if you like. I think you get a lot better results in a drill press because you're drilling straight down in and you don't end up going slightly off at an angle. And it, it can be a pretty big bite to try to take with a handheld drill. Okay, that's mounted in the drill press, but before we start uh, cutting plugs, let's talk a little bit about the, your selection of stock. Now here's the counter bore that we're going to be filling. You can see that's got you know, a fairly straight grain on there. I want to find a piece of scrap that's got a grain pattern and a color that matches that. This piece, for example, not a real good choice because I've got a lot of cathedral grain there, straight grain on the piece I'm trying to match. So I did find a piece that has much straighter grain. You can see those two look very similar. So when I get a plug cut from this straighter grain, it's going to blend much better with the face grain here. Using this is really very simple. Uh, you put a fence uh, below the bit and then bring the bit down and you want to set the stop so it goes about uh, two-thirds of the way through the bit. I've got a, a uh, three-quarter inch thick piece here, so I'm going to go down about a little over half inch. Okay, now, when you're drilling plugs, if you're going to drill one, you might as well uh, make a whole bunch, and that way you can have a little bit of a stock on hand, especially if you've got a project that's going to need uh, a dozen or 50 plugs, drill, drill as many as you need at once. And you're always going to have a couple that roll off the bench under the onto the floor, so have an extra stock. This can happen on occasion. You may get uh, plugs that actually snap off while you're drilling them and they'll get stuck in the bit. Just uh, if you have to take the bit out, get a screwdriver or whatever, an awl, and pop those out of there, then you can keep drilling. Okay, so there's a uh, blank full of plugs. 
that's ready to be popped out. Occasionally, you'll, the bit will help you with uh, popping them out, but you sometimes can't salvage these. The way, the best way to get these out of the blank is you can sometimes just take a screwdriver, reach in there, and they might pop free like that. And there's a couple of plugs ready to go. The other method is you can take this blank to the bandsaw, do a little resawing, and they'll fall right out. So there is a handful of face grain plugs, and those will fit right into the counter bore. Now to glue these, I find it's really just to put a little dab of glue on a piece of scrap, then uh, dab these in. Wipe off, you don't need too much there, and then just give it a twist in. And again, you want to look to orient the grain in line with the face grain of the workpiece. Now let that glue dry. And when the glue is dry, obviously you want to come back and trim this off. You can do that with a chisel, just working gently around, all the way around to pop off the majority of that extra waste. And then with a sanding block, like we've done with our dowel plug here, you can just take a sanding block, sand that down flush, and they'll pretty much disappear.